Hello everyone, this is Ashley O'Donnell, Clinical Quality Consultant with the Iowa Healthcare Collaborative, and I'm excited to share with you all a resource that was created to aid in readmission reduction efforts specifically related to neonatal jaundice. We'll get started here with just a few facts about neonatal jaundice. Jaundice is a condition that continues to affect at-risk newborns and usually occurs because a baby's liver isn't mature enough to eliminate bilirubin in the bloodstream. Neonatal jaundice is the most common cause of hospital readmission in the neonatal period. The Iowa Healthcare Collaborative was able to identify through the readmission data submitted to IPOP that in fact, jaundice is a leading cause of readmissions within five days of discharge for this population in the Compton network. As a result of these findings, this resource was created to help hospitals walk through a mini process improvement project related to reducing neonatal jaundice readmission. So here's a picture of the resource itself. You can see that the intent is to walk through the five elements and on page two, you will see potential strategies to assist you in your efforts. I'm going to briefly walk through these two pages here with you in the upcoming slides. Here is page two with the strategies I mentioned. We will walk through this information in more detail as well. All right, so we will begin with step one, analyzing your data. This first step will help identify a starting point. Is this potentially an area of opportunity that you were not aware of? It can be a challenge at times to know which patients are coming back into the hospital and common themes can sometimes be hard to identify. We recommend you start by looking at all readmissions and breaking them down into categories, including age and diagnoses. Use this data to help identify what your facility's rate of readmissions is, specifically for neonatal jaundice. Keep in mind that you can request patient level data from IPOP to help you identify which patients were readmitted and you can also reach out to your clinical quality consultant here at IHC if you need some guidance on how to get this information. Once you have this data, the next step is to complete a root cause analysis. A root cause analysis is a method of problem solving used to identify the root causes of the problem. Interpret the data you found even further. Look at the sequence of events that led to the readmission. Were there any missteps? What are the current protocols and processes in place related to neonatal jaundice? If there are any in place, are they being followed appropriately? Use this information to identify possible factors leading to readmissions related to neonatal jaundice. Consider using tools to help you walk through a root cause analysis. Linked into this resource is the five whys tool and a fishbone diagram. Again, please don't hesitate to reach out to your clinical quality consultant if you need some help identifying which tools to use. The next step is to brainstorm potential solutions. Form a team that is dedicated to working on decreasing readmissions. You may already have a readmissions team in place where you can discuss this, or it may be best to create a smaller team that is more familiar with the neonatal population and best practices. Once this team is formed, create a goal. Evaluate what your facility's current practices, protocols, policies are compared to what best practice shows. Are there any new resources available to assist you in this work? Is there any evidence that supports equipment your facility does not have? If so, consider creating a business case showing the impact it could have on reducing readmission. The fourth step is to select your strategies. This will come after you have done the research to know which strategies are best practice and what have been shown to effectively reduce readmissions in this area. This tool has some suggested strategies on page two, which we will go over here shortly. All right, so once you have identified your strategies, you will discuss as a team when and how you plan on implementing them. You could do these in small increments to test the change. Utilize the plan, do, study, act methodology by studying how the strategy went, whether it's a new process, new educational tactic, and identify how this needs to be revised. Continue to evaluate your facility's readmission rate to determine if the new strategies are making an impact. Use what you have learned to better your process as you go along. As part of step number four, identifying strategies, we have put together some potential strategies to aid in your readmission reduction efforts. Jaundice is a common condition and affects up to 84% of term newborns. The intent of implementing these strategies is not to prevent jaundice altogether, but to prevent it from becoming serious and reaching a level that requires additional interventions, which is often a hospital readmission. We'll start with the community. The community is a great place to start when looking at how you can collaborate with others on your efforts. 
Families that are discharged home have the potential to feel little ongoing support. We recommend identifying who your community partners are, whether this is public health, home health care, et cetera. Discuss with them what they can offer patients in the community and refer your patients to them if appropriate. Some things to consider discussing with them include the use of phototherapy or blade blankets. Is there a capability to offer either of these through an outpatient service to avoid a readmission if not necessary? Is there someone in the community that specializes in lactation consulting? Is this an offer through home care or are there any classes that are offered that you can let your patients know of prior to discharge? Identify if there are any programs in the community that support parents during the first few months of their newborn's life. There are often entities available that are not well known. Take the time to connect and determine what we can be offering to our patients that can help them succeed as new parents at home. An important strategy is to provide the appropriate education to staff that are caring for the newborns. In order to accurately identify if a newborn is more at risk for developing jaundice, they need to understand what the risk factors are. I won't read all of these to you, but a few important risk factors to be aware of are siblings who have neonatal jaundice, preterm babies, newborns with feeding difficulties, mothers with diabetes, breastfed infants whose mother is on a specific medication, and more. Another strategy that is key to reducing neonatal jaundice readmissions is providing detailed education to parents at time of discharge. Provide this education written and verbally and make sure to use TeachBack to verify their understanding. Discuss with them that adequate amounts of breast milk increase a baby's bowel movements, which help secrete the buildup of bilirubin. Ensure that the newborn has a proper latch and verify that they are comfortable with breastfeeding prior to going home. Ensure that appropriate follow-up is scheduled and discuss with them who to call with any questions or concerns. Provide handouts that discuss neonatal jaundice and read through them together to make sure all their questions are answered. In this resource, you will find links to two credible brochures to use with parents at time of discharge further discussing neonatal jaundice. Last but certainly not least is proper screening techniques. In the beginning of this webinar, we discussed looking through your facility's current protocols and policies related to neonatal jaundice. Does your facility currently check bilirubin levels on all newborns? Does your facility have access to a transcutaneous bilirubin device? If not, this is a piece of equipment that a business case could be completed to show the necessity for it. Discuss as a team what your current practices related to bilirubin checks and compare this to best practice. Completing a thorough examination and once again being aware of these risk factors for developing jaundice is so important. Make sure the staff are adequately communicating all information to the physician and collaborating on a plan of care. All right, so that is the end of the resource and I thank you for listening to this brief webinar walking through the information. My hope is that this gives you some guidance on reducing readmissions in this specific population and also helps you identify some strategies to consider implementing. I would ask that while your facility works through this mini process improvement to communicate with your clinical quality consultant for any assistance and support. Please keep in mind that we are here to help with data, answering questions, discussing best practice, and much more. Thank you, and I hope you all have a great day.